Hello Rock Bags, it's Jade. Welcome to another Grounded Guide. Today we're taking a look at the Black Ant Hill. Pretty much everything you need to know about exploring this brand new place. You're going to need a bunch of equipment with you. I'm doing this in mild mode. This isn't like an expert way to get through. I just want to show you everything you should know ahead of your first trip in there. We're going to obviously take on the brand new mini boss as well to unlock a brand new burgle chip which gets you the spicy eventually and fresh upgrades as well as quartzite upgrades for your weapons. So lots of good stuff to go and get including lots of molars as well. Do leave a like, make sure you're subscribed and go and check out the rest of my grounded content and let's go. So an unusual spot, I'm right at here at the bottom of the map right by all of the hoses at the back. That's because there's a couple places to get through and I find this one of the easiest to get to the black ant hill which is here. If we go along, you should be able to find little holes that you can go through and just paying attention that there is some toxic zones now because there's quite a lot of rotten fruit in and about here. Swim underneath it, go through this bag here and eventually we'll pop out right near the tray of all the food. Now you can just pretty much run through this zone but be careful, you will have to avoid the soldier ants. Black ants are super tough at the moment and there's lots of them. If you start having a fight with some of them, you're going to have a lot of trouble defending against loads of them in this ant hill. So the best tip is if you see a soldier ant, run the other way. Also another top tip, don't bring any food with you. Might be a bit difficult but try and have a long lasting meal and try not bring anything else. The ants seem much more interested in you than the red ones. Also if you wear all black ant armour, if you do manage to get some, you will not be able to use it to just get past them. Unlike the red ants that ignore you, when you wear red ant armour it doesn't work with the black ant armour. You're also going to need at least a tier 2 hammer to go and get some molars and at least maybe 3 or 4 splat bursts. Make sure you bring all of these items, including a shovel for much later. I've gone for spider armor because heavy armor, maybe like the roly poly or others, they're just a bit too slow bringing up your stamina. And when you've got multiple enemies, you need something quick and fast. The worker ants and the soldier ants are resistant against slashing and they take more damage from stabbing and any kind of club. Now chances are you haven't unlocked the spicy upgrade, that's what we're going to do now, but you may have got some spicy arrows if you found some spicy cha-chas, you can make the arrows without the globs. So bring loads of them, they hate spicy. If you haven't got any of the spicy cha-chas just yet, then go ahead and craft feather arrows, mighty damage is best with them as well. In here there's a bunch of food, if you do need to recoup and replenish your health a little bit, then you can do so here. Otherwise, go through avoiding the Black Ant soldiers. Remember, if you're playing it on mild, I could pretty much sit here and take them on, and I probably wouldn't die. But if you're playing on any of the other difficulties, it's a bit more of a challenge. When you're in this next zone, keep running around if he's following you. And if you go around the outsides, so you'll see there's an entrance way down there. But I'm just trying to get rid of this soldier ant a little bit. And this is one of the better ways. It does get really mazy and labyrinth-like in here. Now you've got two tunnels, don't go down the right hand side just yet, that's going to lead you to doorway B, I'll explain that in a bit, and it also unlocks a, a molar that I'm going to show you guys, we're going to stick with this side first. Head up the slope, following these electricity lines. Now you notice there is some soldiers in here, again I would still say try and avoid these guys at all costs. The doorway in front of us is the doorway we eventually need to get through to fight the assistant manager, the new mini boss, which is pretty tough. Now if you're really lucky, they may have got a little bit stuck. But don't use that as an example to go and take them on because as I said, there's plenty of other little black ants that are going to come in here to their rescue. Now I recorded this in mild mode as I said. It does look like I'm missing some science point spawns for some reason. I checked in Discord and a bunch of the guys said that it has actually spawned some science points. Although I have used a mod cheat to go ahead and bypass the first stages of the game. So maybe that's affected it. But let's run up this hill. And then you can see there's a doorway there that we won't be able to get in just yet. We're going to in fact go over here. Don't worry about that entrance, we'll come to that in a while too. So, there's a big entrance. We're going to go through it in a second. And to do so, we're going to need a splat burst. Throw it on. And that should open it up. And then up we go. Now we have got these guys. There's a few of these in here as well, but you can see we're going to open up the doorway to pretty much all the A doors. 
there we go. Now you can go ahead and explore the other corridor and I think eventually it brings you around to another entrance. Some snack bars and that's about it. We're going to carry on going through and you'll see there's an analyzer table and one of these guys. Now you can see doorway B is still locked. But luckily for us that ant soldier has taken out all these tases. Have a little break, scan in the items that you've just got. The mandibles there unlock the black ant sword and the black ant chest plate. Keep following this path. We'll go all the way up top. And it should bring us to a little loot room. There's nothing else really going on, but we do want this loot chest right here. It does get a bit confusing, but obviously that's the doorway we're trying to unlock still, B. So go up the slope here on the right hand side. Go through this doorway this time. And you'll notice there's a big area that we can jump through. There's plenty of quartzite in here as well, so if you have got the space, it might be worth capturing some of it. Drop down. And there's a tiny little hole. Here you can have a little break, have a little rest before taking on the assistant manager. I'm just going to grab whatever loot's in here. The meals and the grenades are probably the most useful thing you can find while you're exploring down here. Also don't forget to save point here too. There's plenty of resources to upgrade and repair stuff. Also if you need to get some food. Also find some mint shards as well which might be handy. Remember you only need to eat 5 of them now to get level 2 mutation. Or well, 1 of them to get the first one and then 5 of them to get the second level. And I do believe it's 10 of them to get the third. That will give you fresh defence and protection against the sizzle, which will come in handy, so make sure you eat them if you haven't done so already. Obviously if you already unlocked all the mutations, then keep them for later, so you can make your fresh globs. It's pretty handy, they'll give us some smoothies, as we're definitely going to need some of these. And should open up to another big chamber eventually, once we uh, open up the doorway and take care of these tases. Hi guy, what you doing up there? And there we go, we've unlocked the doorway. Now again, try not to attack the soldier, it really isn't worth it. And this time we're actually going to go up this way. And then down. If I don't get stuck on the ceiling. Hopefully this guy is not following me too long. And this is why I said don't bother going on that right hand side when we had to that crossroads because we eventually end up here anyway. Now you can see there's a molar chip around there. Or a molar, I don't know why I call it a chip. Let's go around. Get your splat burst ready. And throw. Don't really want to take this guy on. But needs must. Okay, here we go. I do believe this is one of two that are in here, and there's two Mega Milks in here as well. And that is a Milk Mode Upgrade. So if we run, carry on going this way again, and back in one of the main chambers we were at earlier. They're pretty fast, the soldiers. So you may not be able to dodge them as quickly. I'm going to jump down here this time. I'm going to go through this doorway. Hopefully... They're not coming up to follow us. Black Ant Shield. And there's another loot box we can open. You can see it even gives you some spicy arrows, so you know that's the weakness of the Black Ants. Okay, so from here now, we should be able to see that doorway B there. So that's where we're going to head back. There's plenty of quartzite in this little area too. If you want to get some extra. And in we go. And there's another molar. Looks like we're going to have to fight these guys. So they can be pretty deadly, obviously. I think using a shield is the way to go here. I wasn't doing too well. And you can see even on mild, a few hits from them, and it starts to really rack it up the damage. Like I said, this is going to be very tough. Hopefully you're a bit better player than I am. 
So let's get the other milk molar. There we go. That's the second one. There's absolute bundles of quartzite in here as well. So like I said, make sure you get all this. And we've got one more splat burst. So you can see there's a tunnel. If we actually take this all the way up. It will lead us to yet more loot. Grab this one. And that's literally just where we came through. We go in this way. All the way up. We're in another chamber where we were earlier. Just go ahead and scan anything else you picked up. So now, instead, we're going to go back this way. We should be in one of the main chambers that we can go to the next stage. Drop down again. Remember, that's the doorway that we came when we went down below. But now we can actually go through this doorway. Remember, this was the first doorway we saw when we started coming into the chambers. You know you're on the right path when you've got these two screens on either side. Is a little secret cracked rock that you should take care of here. And inside, we've got another little secret corridor. It's a good thing we picked up some of these Brathursts. You've got some weird mushrooms in here. In fact, it's pretty crazy, this place. I reckon there's definitely some science points hiding in here. It's interesting, these mushrooms, they're kind of glowing a little bit. And I wonder if they're going to be something we can harvest in the future. So they do look pretty different from the rest. They're kind of molded mushrooms. Maybe they'll add a mutation in this zone in the future. Who knows? But well, the reason we're really here is to get the Mega Milk Molar. There's plenty more clay and stuff like that in this little room. If you come right over here, you've got like a little dirt pile that you can climb up. And this will take you to a gold molar. There we go. Done. Seems like a lot of work just to go through to get a gold one. So I reckon they might add or do more stuff with this in the future. And it's a bit of just a weird spot to come and get some more mushrooms. Anyway, back out to the corridor. And then we're going to carry on going down. And you can see we're in the big chamber. Now again, there's more ant soldiers in here. Let's be careful. In fact, you won't be able to really avoid these guys. You can maybe try getting up high and pretty much shoot them with your crossbow. Looks like soldiers are more prone to mighty arrows than maybe just regular ants, as they actually take more damage, comparatively. So this is a good way to stay up here and to take out without getting hurt. There's another gold molar up this way as well. And there we go, took them out. And that's the second Mega Milk. Let's pick up my arrows again. Again, absolute ton of quartzite. So you might want to come back here time and time again. to keep getting as much as you can. Now this doorway is what we're actually trying to get into. You can see up top there's nothing really going on either sides. But we can press this button. And that is where we're going to be in a minute. So get your brat burst. Luckily, like I said, we've found some of these. It might be a bit difficult to get this to set off. There we go. We got through. Now make sure you're really prepared. You can't set any actual sleep points here, which kind of sucks. If you've got any of these left, you might actually want to use them. And look out for these, as these are going to come alive soon. And actually do a lot of damage. The one in the middle will eventually start shooting out laser beams that damage you, and the ones on the sides, they shoot out electricity beams or pulses. So I've run through here before when the first PTS server went live, and I showed you this boss fight, but it's incredibly tough, even on mild. You can see I'm doing a fair amount of damage with just obviously a ramped up crossbow, just to show you a little bit what else happens. 
I would say try and take care of some of these adds as they can just pretty much confuse you. If you've got a shield, you can block the lightning balls or even hit them away like they're a baseball bat. Obviously, this is pretty dangerous. You've got to hide behind the extra pillars here to try and avoid them. You can actually crouch beneath the two laser beams and jump over the other one. But again, it's a lot going on if you've got all of these mobs attacking you at the same time. So that's why I reckon you should probably try and clear them out a little bit. When you get this guy down to half health, that's when he goes real turbo. He's got this ground pound attack that signals he's going to start the laser beams in the middle. So that might be a good time to use your actual bow and arrow. I've obviously got a tier 7 ant club here and it's upgraded with mighty. So it's doing a good amount of damage. So you might want to make sure you've got armor that has a lot of stamina regeneration. Even on mild, I'm already down to half health. So you can see, it doesn't take as much damage from these, but it is good to have a club because you hopefully will be able to defend a little bit. Duck behind this again. Uh, I'm going to get my crossbow back out again. So he starts calling more adds again. That in combination with everything that's going around, I just wasn't that prepared. I kind of ended up getting owned. But it took me my third attempt before finally beating him. And like I said, that was only on mild. And bear in mind, I'm not the best player at stuff. Now, I found this electricity lightning bolt did quite a bit of damage. In combination with some of the other mobs hitting me, it wasn't long before I actually died. So you respawn and obviously, yeah, you're going to obviously take a lot of damage to your armor. So when you come back, the door will be shut again. You're going to have to jump up and actually deactivate it. But thankfully, you don't need to destroy the glass again. So if you do die, it does reset. Maybe you bought some better tanking armor. That might be a good option here in trying to defeat him. But like I said, I felt like with the stamina regeneration, especially if you use the hammer, which I'm going to show you guys, that's not a bad way to take him out. Obviously, if you've got a upgraded mint mallet, then yes, that's going to be even better. Or even the broodmother club. This time, I'm going to do smashing damage on him. You can see it takes nearly a whole segment when you use it. So my armor on my spider suit is definitely coming a bit better. Mutations wise, obviously you can use things that enhance whatever weapon you're using. Or definitely if you're going for more health and more stamina, that might be a good idea if you've got mutations. But yeah, focus on the adds. So when he gets to halfway point, that's when he's going to go a bit more turbo as well again. You can see it's not a great one to use. The hammer, I feel, is definitely better a tier 2 one than just an up. Try and stay in the middle when this is happening. And just use your shield ability to hopefully avoid the blue shields. You can't really defend against that. you just got to get in the middle. So I could cut out all these fails, you might be wondering. But I do like to show you up so you learn and see an actual proper boss fight. And I'm not trying to be some perfect player here. So this time I went straight for him and smacked him a couple times. I think I managed to get three hits in before... I backed away a little bit and took care of the little minions. And again, trying to make sure you're using the shield. Obviously, I've got the black ant shield here. You might not have crafted that by now. So you might have to rely on just the weevil shield. But you can bounce off the lightning bolts as well. And so I'm really doing quite a bit of damage to him now. So we're nearly halfway. And it's only been a few minutes before he did his big attack of summoning the laser beams. I don't think the lasers damage the other creatures. But they kind of delay them or stagger them a little bit. As you heard him uh, wince into it. It's worth noting this was probably like the 14th hit I did on him. And I managed to stun him. So if you get that happening, that's really good. So maybe try aiming for something that's going to do a lot more stun on him. Apparently Slash isn't too bad facing off against these guys, so maybe using a two-handed antlion sword if you've managed to get that already as well. So I was paying much more attention here, I ran to the middle and just bided my time. With no other adds causing me any trouble, it was a bit easier to dodge. This was a bit tricky, you meant to literally just jump over like it's a game of Wipeout and kind of stay away from him a little bit. If you do get caught in that ground pound he does, it does actually cause quite a bit of damage to you as well.
And you can see even stepping out of line slightly in the middle means you're going to get done. So you kind of do want to hug the middle pole there. Quick little refill of my health. And this time I was much more prepared. Hopefully we're going to finish him off this time. You can see the laser seems to be much stronger than it was earlier. Or maybe it just caught me a bunch of times. But I took like 30-40% of my health then. Even when you have defeated him, be careful because the traps will still carry on for one run at least. So quickly hide behind a pole and wait for him to subside. Once he's defeated, he'll give you a thousand more science and his assistant magic key card. Once done, you can go through the corridors. And this actually leads to a way out as well as the burgle chip. But don't forget there was some stuff here, a loot chest as well. And then through the doorway, and there is the burgle chip. Now, if you follow this up, it'll actually take you out. Like I said, it'll exit all the way out to the backyard, and it's the safest way to get out of here. And this is another way that you can escape back to burgle nice and easy. However, if you're quick, you may be able to make it and actually unlock a bunch of the new globs in the sandbox. It's so pretty much head out back the way that you came. Once you exit out of doorway B, turn around and follow these now. You'll notice another avenue where you can go left and right. On the right hand side, there's just some mushrooms. So if you need to actually get some food, maybe some more quartz. For some reason, my science is glitching out, so maybe there's some science points there. Then you've got two avenues here as well. Take the right hand side, and you see we've got another cracked rock to break. And that's where you get the corporate issue scab. Let's go back round to the little junction. And this time head left. It's a bit of a long way. You'll come to this little area here. And then you've got two options. Go in the cave down here. And you just simply see where the actual scab was. Just in case you had passed it. You didn't realise it was there. You should be able to see it through. And then the other option... This will take you eventually to the sandbox. Warning though, this is where you're going to find ant lions. So even before you venture out into the sands, maybe for the first time, see if you've brought enough materials to make a bed. And there you go. You can see I'm taking sizzling damage. If you do happen to have any mints, that should help a little bit with that. FYI, black ants and ant lions don't get on. They'll actually fight each other. So it can be easy to kite them over and help you if you do get attacked. So, if you're coming outside, just run directly. Do not stop. Do not pay any attention to any of the ant lines that might attack you. And we're looking for that laboratory right over there. You can see the entrance just there. Hopefully you'll make it before you start losing too much health. And in we go. So the chip we got in the ant hill, that's eventually going to unlock quartzite globs. And this one unlocks fresh mint and spicy globs. Also the mint mace, mint mallet. On that board is a clue on how to get more treasure and that's going to give you the salt star, which is really super great as well. This is where your shovel is going to come in handy. So check the time of day and pretty much wait till 3.30 or don't wait at all. The shadow of the spade is meant to show you where it is, but as long as you kind of hover around with your spade, it will pop up. I'm going to quickly run in. Hope to get some shade here. Nope. I'm back into laboratory and replen your health. Obviously, if you're doing this at night time, it's going to be a lot easier. Maybe you come and explored this area already and you've got antlion armor and you've got a little base set up. Either way, this is just how to do it if you've directly just done the ant thing first. Really, technically, the ant dungeon should be done, I guess, last. But I feel like it's on a good pattern in coming back into the sandcastle to get these two. Now we can run over to the sandcastle. We're looking to get into the water as quickly as possible. Just like that. Swim all the way round. And you open up the chest. Not only do you get a molar. But you also get the recipe for the salt mace. So this isn't a guide for the sandbox explicitly. I will show that another time. 
but I figure this is a pretty important part of the actual ant hill. Oh no! Obviously scanning the black ant parts unlocks the shovels and the rest of the stuff as well. But hopefully you've killed a few by now and you actually bought the shovel first before doing the ant hill. So you get 2000 points for giving him the actual burgle chip. And you can see you get the smithing quartzite glob and you can also unlock the cookbook sandbox meals, the omulants and the quesidia antlion. You also get the science set glow and lures. And that's all from the black ant chip. Then with the chip that you just got from the laboratory in the sandbox, that unlocks the mint and spicy globs as well as the mint mace. So definitely buy the mint and spicy globs first. With the salt one that you got from the picnic table, that's all of them complete now. Just got to go into the Hayes laboratory to get the oven and craft them. And of course, you've probably bought it by now, but the smithing station is the one that you get from the grass burgle chip when you first meet burgle. And there you go, it's pretty lengthy, it's pretty large. I expect that to have some work done to it over the coming weeks. I feel like there's still just a few bits that just don't really make enough sense or it's a bit too long and windy without being able to save at certain points. Like I said, maybe it's just me with the science points not glitching and stuff. In the future, I do believe we're going to need the ant confuser bombs to get through here as there's just too many black ants and I think the idea is that you're meant to do it stealthily rather than going gun ho but obviously, if you're a pro player, I'm sure you won't have too much trouble, especially if you've upgraded a lot of your weapons and you know what you're doing. But I think that's the design in the future. We've still got the Ant Queen to come as well, and we know the Pheromone Maker has been included lately in the PTS notes. So hopefully that's going to come in the future too. But I expect this dungeon to maybe get even a bit harder. But yeah, hopefully they expand on it a little bit and we get a kind of reason to go into that little mushroom cave. Hope you found the whole guide useful. If you have, leave a like. Make sure you subscribe for the best and grounded content. And I'll see you for more guides soon. Bye-bye.